this is Vincent Schilling. I am a journalist for Indian Country Today Media Network. And if you look at the handsome guy down there in the blue shirt with the green stripe, it's Felipe Rose of the Village People. And uh, we are here to ask you a few questions. Hello, Pio. Welcome. Uh, glad you can make it. Hello. Great. Hello. Doing wonderful. Doing wonderful. Uh, I am here with Felipe Rose. Now, Felipe Rose is the Native American of the Village People. Um, I met him when he came here to Virginia Beach. And... Uh, one of the world's most fantastic entertainers. And, oh, um, thank you. On. Yeah, you're absolutely welcome. Uh, and we wanted to take a, just a little bit of time today to um, talk about your memories with Donna Summers. I mean, you, I mean, come on, Felipe. You're, uh, admittedly, you are a disco icon. Uh, who doesn't know Felipe Rose, the village people, and the things you've done? Uh, who doesn't know Donna Summers? You know, you're no, known from... My goodness, Africa to Virginia. So, I mean, it just doesn't matter. People will know who the village people are. People have sung Y and C, you know, in this. So, you know, um, first of all, welcome. I, I really appreciate you joining me with the Hangout here. Thanks, and, and, and thanks for getting me now on Google Plus <laughs> on the air. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So is this your very first Google Plus Hangout? This is my very friend. Who's the gentleman I'm looking at? Hit, you can even read his name if you put your mouse over his name. It's Pio Dalsin. So, Pio, where, where are you, where are you uh, coming in from, Pio? I'm coming in from Italy, Venice. Oh, in, wow. In Venice. Awesome. And I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled uh, to, to be here because I know the village people. They're very well known here in Italy as well. And uh, as I saw Vincent uh, hanging out, uh, and I know... He, him from uh, Sarail, I, I, I thought I'd join in and, and be honored to be here with you Well, guys. thank you. You know that we, uh, Pino, we, uh, we go to Italy a lot. You know that, right? Yeah, I've seen you quite a bit on the television here, on the, on the national television, right? Sometimes yes. uh, when we have those shows with Carlo Conti. Carlo Conti, and, and yes. uh, we actually have, uh, have uh, had uh, a long-time love affair with Italy, uh, going back to the San Remo Festival. Oh yeah. With you, you with, are, you are with, loved. Thank you with the song Five O'clock in the Morning. <laughs> yeah. You guys, yeah. they they like that from the Renaissance album. Everybody <laughs> knows the village people here in Italy. I guarantee you that you oh are my, very famous. Yeah, here. they go crazy, Vincent, for us over there. Well, that is fantastic. Well, now Pio, you can go to the Schilling Media Schilling. S-C-H-I-L-L-I-N-G media, M-E-D-I-A. Uh, you can go to the Schilling Media YouTube channel. And, Pio, if anybody doesn't believe you, you can show that you were part of this Google Plus Hangout on air. So now you got it, my friend. So. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> well, great. Yeah, great. Here I am. Here I am. Can you see that? <laughs> oh, yeah. That's me. Pio. Oh, that's you. Oh, you know, I love I I love the the Native American culture so much. I've got I have got so much from it. When Thank I live you. In the States, I really appreciate your people very much. Thank you very much. And I'm in California right now because uh, we've been here for a week, and I we have a show tonight with uh, with the with the village people. We're here in we're in uh, Santa Clara. That's right outside of San Francisco. So we have a concert tonight. Oh. Well, that's great. Hey, so Felipe, um, here, here's my questions for you. I have, uh, you know, obviously, uh, recently we, you know, and the world received, and it was tw trending on Twitter. It was all over the place on Facebook. Uh, Donna Summer, you know, disco icon has passed on and crossed over, and uh, very sad. Uh, I remember as a child. Uh, in between dancing to your album, you know, in my room, uh, I also was dancing to Donna Summers, and, and you know, um, you guys were on the same label. So, what are your, some of your earliest memories when you first met her? Um, she was a very generous woman and a very uh, just beautiful woman. Very talent. Well, first of all, needless to say that that voice of hers is still. Uh, she still kept that instrument. Uh, intact just up until her passing away. Uh, from what I hear, she recorded two albums. Um, she one second project that actually was not finished 
uh, recorded with uh, Katy Perry, Lady Gaga, and Madonna. So it seems that they were working on a all dance, all out dance album with other pr uh, l l women in the industry who you know looked up to her because Donna Summer is the precursor to Madonna. Mm -hmm. you know, well, I didn't know that. Uh, well, uh, well, when you listen to the influence of Madonna's music, you can hear instrumentally the the and a lot of her arrangements. They are so Donna Summer is ridiculous. Mm. You know. Mm. Yeah. And uh, yes, we were on the same label, Casablanca Records, mm -hmm. and we uh, we met her when we were on the label, and she came to greet us because she didn't live that far away from us. Okay. And she came to say hello and greet us. And I actually remember a really funny moment when uh, we were sitting uh, just staring at her because, you know, we couldn't believe that she was standing in the same office with us. And so one of the guys said to me, are you going to tell her? And I said, no. I said, no, you tell her. And they said, no, you tell her. And she said, what's wrong? I said, your wig is crooked. <laughs> <laughs> so she fixed it. So we laughed, you know, and um, and from then on, you know, it was a a, a very you know admirable artistic relationship. Mm -hmm. And we uh, another time we saw her was when we went to see Dolly Parton at the Greek Theater in mm -hmm. Los Angeles, and she was with her husband. Bruce Sedano from the Brooklyn Dreams. So the thing about the Greek theater, when a major concert is going on, that right before the lights go down, they just always put a light over to stage, uh, would be their stage left, our stage right. Mm -hmm. And uh, like a spotlight. And basically, they, they bring out all the celebrities that are going to take their seats. So... At that moment, you know, uh, the celebrities were, were being walked out, and then, of course, Donna walked out with Bruce, and the, the place just huge applause. Then we all walked out after her, and it was just insane because people were just could not believe that we were all together, breathing, breathing the same air, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and you know you, that that's that's a great story. And you know you also told me that you know it's not just like you knew Donna Summers. Sometimes you would pass by in the hallway in Casablanca. You guys hung out. You went to you know out on the town. Well, we didn't. We, we didn't. Well, I, I mean, professionally, we would see each other a lot at at, at concerts and stuff. But mm -hmm. when it came to like unveiling of uh, de album debuts, like I I can remember. Before the public had the album Bad Girls, mm -hmm. I ra I drove to Casablanca because I needed to pick up like ten cassettes. Because remember, we were cassettes. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> and I had to pick up like ten copies, and I had a Mustang, and it was a convertible. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, grabbed my cassettes and said goodbye to the PR guy or the A and R person, and immediately like it wasn't even wrapped. I just opened it. And put it in the cassette, and then you know, hot stuff came on. Oh man! Looking for some hot stuff, baby. This and I mean, we all remember that. And I cranked up the the, the <laughs> volume and was driving down Sunset Boulevard, and and people are looking and going, "Is that Donna Summer? Is that the new Donna Summer?" And I'm like, "Yeah, it's brand new." And <laughs> like so, you know, I mean, I loved it. I loved it. Uh, yeah, it was it, it was wonderful. It was wonderful. And um, so sadly, um. It was shocking uh, because we also lost uh, Dick Clark uh, mm -hmm. a month ago. Yeah. So you know, I'm I'm I feel like I was telling you earlier. I feel like my life is in a transition right now, mm -hmm. where I feel like I'm in 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 a, in a uh, we need to move into enlightenment because um, I'm reliving uh, a lot of my past through the passing of many friends, and especially with Donna, who, whose music. Now, you know, to say that who can remember their favorite Donna Summer music or the Donna Summer song, I have several. Mm -hmm. um, MacArthur Park, The Deep, Could It Be Magic, uh, Bad Girl. So, you know, you can go on. The list goes on. But what was interesting about Donna is that she went through her phases. Like, if you hear I Feel Love, 
with jo with Giorgio Moroda, that trans European sound at that time that was so many light years ahead of its time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's and, and it's funny because I don't th I think that uh, everyone I, mean, I don't know if there's anyone you could talk to that doesn't have a, a favorite Donna Summer song if not many you know what I'm saying. Well, that's the thing is that, you know, I, I think that the, what music does is that it creates its, its soundtrack to our lives. Mm -hmm. And because of that, I mean, it, even though people, like a lot of people didn't know her, um, and I turned on several radio stations that day, people were calling and crying and, you know, like if they actually knew her. Okay. And I was like stunned at the outpouring of love. You know, and yet there was a difference between Whitney Houston. Not that we were shocked, but we, it was a surprise to see, to see her, you know, her loss. Mm -hmm. And that at the same time, with Whitney's passing, you know, her music was also part of a generation. Yeah. So it's interesting that when people define music in a, in a decade, you can actually remember where you were when you hear, you know, love to love you, baby. Right, or, right. I can remember. <laughs> or, or hot stuff, you know, or just, just so many different songs, you know? Yeah, I can remember very well my uh, dinky little, you know, house with, a, you know, my brother and my sister, and we would all dance like maniacs on AM radio, by the way. So. Oh, my God, yeah. We have oh, Sarah, hey, uh, Philippe, I by the Sarah way, Hill. Yes, Sarah Hill has like 5 billion followers on Google+. Plus. She's an anchor. <laughs> Hello, Sarah. <laughs> Hello, it's great to see you, and, and so great to meet you. Vince and I appreciate this opportunity. Um, big fan of yours. Thank uh, you. And, and welcome to Hangouts. Is this your first Hangout? This is my first Hangout, and now many more to come. <laughs> <laughs> we walked through. There was a bit of a. <laughs> I never could believe that was actually, uh, you know, your 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 actual voice. But you know, and we had a little bit of technical technical difficulty, but we got it. We're here. We're we're ready and we're going. We're having a live broadcast. And Sarah, where are you? Where are you at? I'm located in Columbia, Missouri. We're the NBC affiliate in Columbia, Missouri. Um, we're out on a horse farm in the middle in the middle of Missouri. So oh, I call it. I love it. And we call it Missouri. <laughs> yep, some people call it Missouri, but it is in fact Missouri. Now yeah. I see her getting larger. I, I see her getting larger on the screen. And what is it that you're doing, uh, Vincent? Uh, you you get closer or you back up? It's no, I see Sarah getting <laughs> popping on the screen. Oh, it's it's kind of like telepresence technology. It's all audio controlled, so who's ever talking is bounced up to the big screen. I so, see. Yeah. However, if you click on our thumbnail. There's a, a, a blue box that goes around that individual, and it sticks on them in the big box. And if you click it again, it unsticks on them. Okay, great. Well, well, hi, Sarah. <laughs> hey, it's, it's good to see you. So you Thank were you. talking Thank about um, Donna Summer, huh? Yeah, we're talking about Donna Summer. Be, uh, and sad, that's so sad that uh, it was a shock, actually, um, mm -hmm. to the music world. And um, well, I'm presently in California. We're having a show tonight. Um, I'm in Santa Clara, so we've been here for a week, and I've had a bunch of different activities, red carpet events, and uh, then a concert in Long Beach with the group, and now, of course, I that day uh, when the news broke, I was called by um, uh, Larry, Gl Larry Flick from Sirius Radio, and they called me and they said, you know, are you home? Can we speak to you? We postponed the show, and we're doing a tribute, uh, tribute four hours to Donna. And I said, sure. I, they said, okay, well, call us right after the news. And so basically, it was uh, just to remember the, you know, to remember how her beauty, her faith, uh, her artistry, and you know, her family, and and just the legacy of music that she left behind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And. And I remember calling you, and you were just like, I feel uh, numb right now. Because, uh, you know, just before you came on, Sarah, uh, we were talking to Kyo, and, and I and Felipe were mentioning how uh, Felipe had met her at Casablanca Records and told her her wig was crooked. <laughs> well, 
<laughs> she was so excited to see us, that, to meet us, that, you know, it wasn't really on straight. And so one of the guys in the group said, you tell her. And I said, no, I'm not. You tell her. And then they were like, okay, I'll tell her. And she said, what? What? What's wrong? And I said, your wig is crooked. And she's like, fix it. <laughs> <laughs> and that was, you know, early. That was early. You know, that was early, early song, early mm -hmm. Donna. But the nice thing about that is that, you know, there is, I would undisputedly, there is one song that will play at night, and I think Sarah knows which song it is. At every night in a club, where wherever you were, and Pio knows this. What was the number one song on? Last Dance. Thank you. <laughs> well, and, and you know, if you if you didn't have, if you didn't have, you look at your clock, and you had that that intro of Last Dance starting. If you didn't have your date or your smush for the night, <laughs> and by the time that song started, then you were out. <laughs> you know, the minute the song would start, you had people would start running around. Oh my God, I gotta find, I gotta find my piece for tonight or my date. Oh, let me get this last year. If that song started and you did not have a partner, you were done for. Mm -hmm. Hey, hey, Felipe, show show the uh, the album again. Which album? <laughs> the one you were holding. Oh, that photograph of yourself. It's, a, it's thought... just a postcard. We want to see it. <laughs> <laughs> there he is. That, that's me. That's Very me. cool. That's me hey. praying, praying in the mountains. Hey, Felipe. Felipe, I have one other question because um, I know you have to get moving. So I wanted to ask you one last time: Is you know, obviously the profound effect that Donna Summer had on not just you know, in a music genre, but on literally the world. I don't think anybody. I mean, it, you'd be very hard pressed to find someone who hasn't heard of her. Um, what would you say has been her effect on the music world in general? I mean, it's a heck of an impact. I think that her 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 her, her Im impact is was the, the the art form of 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 dancing on the dance floor of of taking. She was able to transport everyone and literally keep us on the dance floor. That there. And also just the fact that she was able to uh, be herself, not sell herself out, remain true to what she wanted to do with her artistry mm -hmm. and with and her vocal. She managed to keep that instrument going um, for pretty much the, the 30 plus years of her life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, you know, the another classic on Donna Summer song is, uh, you know, she works hard for the money, which then became an, which which became an anthem. Uh, Sarah would know, Sarah would know this. Uh, she works hard for the money became an anthem for women. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, it, it, it did. And who is now, this gentleman? That's Gary. Welcome, it's Gary Levin. He's come on, come on board. Hello, Gary. Vincent, I got a quick question for Lee. Would it be possible for me to ask about your charity? Absolutely, work? please ask a question. I understand that you do a, a lot of charity work, and um, hats off to you for using your platform in that way. Can you talk about that a little bit? I do. Thank you very much. Um, well, I'm. I just actually just did a huge charity event in Los Angeles. Uh, with Sirius Radio, uh, my guest was uh, uh, Doria Biddle, and it was uh, Courtney Love was performing, Wanda Sykes, Linda Perry, uh, Kat Von D. It was at the Beverly Hilton uh, Hotel, and it was for the Gay and Lesbian Center, and all the money raised for that went to, went to the center. But my charity is. Uh, uh, I have several AIDS charity. Uh, I have the uh, Women's uh, Cancer Foundation, the charity, and then the Children's Miami uh, uh, Hospital for Children with Cancer out of Miami. Um, so I have uh, several platforms that I lend my name to, and throughout the year, there will either be silent auctions or several charities that I can attend, 
and also the uh, school for kids in Asbury Park where they are you know mentored and tutored after school and then they in the summer they get to I live in Asbury Park New Jersey and so the kids at the uh, Asbury Park uh, school after school learning program which is like a big brother big sister type of a, a program uh, basically gets them ready you know to get into high school and what it takes the skills that they're going to need to take them into into school and you know we talk about the anti-bullying situation I've lent my name to that and and and, and causes uh, you know and speak out against that um, but you know there are so many but again you know there are the, the, the five in, uh, that I can say on my hand are uh, Women's uh, Breast Cancer Foundation and the Pediatric AIDS uh, for Children and um, and other HIV ch charitable organizations and the uh, and the Gay and Lesbian Alliance for the uh, mm -hmm. Los Angeles uh, Center. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I yeah I appreciate you answering that question too because you know a lot of people don't realize Sarah that. Felipe Rose has literally raised millions and millions uh, of dollars for charity, you know, um, selfless. What is the group, too? You know, it's, it's not just me. It's, um, um, we use the platform. We use our platform, and, and, you know, I say that when you do things under the radar, you don't need to talk about it. You just do it. And basically, the reward that comes back is knowing that, you're helping other people, and also every year at the coat drive at Pine Ridge Reservation, I get involved with that as well. Yeah, because it gets blistering cold. In literally, literally, freezing. yeah, literally in September, and October, it starts going right into winter in in the in the in the out in the out west. Mm -hmm. Well, hey, Felipe, I really really appreciate it. Uh, any last words you'd like to say? You know, because I know you have to move move on. Well, I just, well, you know, I, yesterday they, it was uh, Donna Summer's burial and uh, a prize ceremony. Um, I'm still praying for her family, for Bruce and Mimi in Brooklyn and their other daughter and, and their family. Uh, Donna did lose two other sisters to cancer. Um, mm -hmm. Again, so, you know, it, it's, it's a loss that we had to once again... Um, find and open, you know, our social media and, you know, could you say, is it true? Is it not true? Oh, this is probably a joke until you really have to go on television to, to see it, you know, for yourself. But, um, you know, I, I pray that her soul, she's at peace and I'm sure she is and I'm really honored that she left us with a, a legacy of music that, that's going to live a uh, hundred years from now. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right, Larry? <laughs> what is he saying? I think it's Gary. <laughs> Gary, right, Gary? <laughs> well, I want to thank you guys. And Sarah, nice meeting you. It I, is I think wonderful I, to meet you. Wonderful to meet you. Who's that, young, who is that, who's, that, who's that dude over there? Introduce yourself. <laughs> I'm Cody. I'm a student at MU. Oh, hey, He's Cody. Journalism, journalism school student. Um, so he wanted to he wanted to say hello. Oh well, hello, thank you, <laughs> Sarah. We're gonna be in touch a lot more often because I'm now gonna be in the Google Plus uh, chat room video chats. <laughs> well, that is great because you know what? The first celebrity who gets this space wins. So you are very smart, my friend, to, oh. to partake in this face-to-face -face interaction. Well, well, the, but what I'm gonna do next time is that I'm gonna be in full tribal gear. <laughs> That'll be great. <laughs> and I'll make sure to invite all you guys to that because it's going to be an event, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. everyone, have a great Memorial Weekend. P.O. in Italy, I'm sure it's evening for you. And uh, Larry, have a great day. Sarah, yeah. nice meeting you. Nice meeting you. We'll see you later. And, and Thank thanks you for remembering you. Donna with me. All right. All My right. pleasure. Thank you, Thank Vincent. you, Felipe. It was great uh, see you meeting later. you. Thanks, really great. All Thank right. you, guys. <laughs> All right, wow. folks. All right, folks. Well, thanks so much for joining us. And Felipe, we'll uh, we'll see you again here on the Google Plus Hangouts. And this is Shilling Media Inc. You can go to our YouTube channel. Of course, you're already there watching this YouTube. Uh, this is Vincent Vincent Schilling signing out with, of course, the world famous and iconic figure Felipe Rose. Felipe, we love you.
Love you, man. Thank you. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye, Thank you so much. Nice meeting you. Ciao. Ciao, ciao.